So let me give you a little quick summary of what's happened. All right. So a bunch of 4chaners and Reddit epic meme uh, epic memers, uh, Elon Musk, Bacon, Big Chungus, and a hedge fund have gone to war. And the battleground that they chose to battle over is a shop that some of you might have known about from the old times, from the before times, known as GameStop. What is GameStop? Well, GameStop, it's a stop where you can buy games at. Lol, it is a store that sells video games, okay? Now, for those of you who don't have uh, economics-diseased brains you might be like well how on earth could gamestop become the battleground of a bunch of uh gamblers and a bunch of billionaire gamblers and let me tell you that is the tale we are about to dive deep into so let me start this all off with an image okay this image right here. Over the last month, this has been GameStop's stocks. Now, as you can see, on this side of the image, line is very go up. And on this side, line is not very go up. It go up, up, up. It go big up, it big green. Now you might go, none of this means anything to me. Well, I'm gonna teach you what all of this means, okay? Yeah, get your hot chips. Get your hot chips and start charging your phone. Yeah. Uh, do all time? You want me to see the all time? Yeah. Look at the all time. Here's the max. As you can see, this has motherfucking exploded. Absolutely no, never. Not even at the peak of its success in 2007 has it even been close to this value. Unbelievable. And this all happened over the course of, you know, more or less. I mean, the real spike started happening right around the 21st. Well, see, Rook, that's... Don't know if that's going to happen. Oh, we'll get into that blah blah though. Don't worry. So to also set the mood, I want to play you a little clip that I have saved. Because right now, as we all have found out, the Wall Street Bets Discord, which all of this will make sense soon, I promise, is down. And actually, let me double check. Let's see. Is it still down? Let's double check. Let's see. Uh, yeah, here you go. Here's proof, by the way. This is the OG Wall Street Bets Discord, the official Discord. It is completely busted. You cannot verify, and it was completely down for quite a while. Yeah. Yup. And let's check. Let's check on Reddit. Let's check. Is it privated? Let's just let's just double check. Hey. Wait. Hey, look at that. I can get in. I think the Reddit is still up. <laughs> Looks like it's still up. Or it went back up. So. Oh my god. Absurd. So, let me just lay out the basics before I give you the meme, okay? What is Wall Street Bets? Wall Street Bets is a subreddit full of black pilled memers who have more money than they know what to do with. Okay? Now, in order to understand how Wall Street Bets works, you need to know what Robin Hood is. Does anybody know what Robin Hood is? Anybody know what uh, what Robin Hood is? Anybody? Anybody in chat? Anybody want to offer it up? Do you know what Do you know what it is? Come on, tell people. Tell people what it is. Come on. 
to trading platform app. Yes. Yes, indeed. Robinhood. <sighs> Men in tights. Yeah. Yeah. Robinhood is an app that anybody can get on their phone that makes it very, very easy to trade stocks. And this has meant that there's there's the the uh, bar to entry to stock trading has lowered slightly. I mean, you still need money to buy stocks, but it's much easier to get into now. It's uh, it's it's made very easy for you to buy stocks and sell stocks. And there's a bunch of rules that are within it, just like any other stock app. But it's much easier to use as a very nice, easy UI. And a lot of people have gotten into stock trading. And it lets you do it. Uh, you could basically, you can kind of day trade, but not super reliably. But if you want to do it recreationally, it allows people to trade stocks. And we're going to have to explain some of the concepts here. Because um, we'll get into that as we go on. But I just want to lay down the foundation so you can understand what's actually happening. Oh, yeah, it also does crypto investment, of course. Um, Robinhood uh, is really important to Wall Street bets. Because Wall Street bets is basically, um, as you can see, YOLO <laughs> is one of their own tags on this website wall street bets is a reddit forum where people let's be honest irresponsibly trade stocks and they mostly do it to get rich quick and gamble and a lot of people lose money but a lot of people make money because it's gambling now the real secret the real secret is that all investing is gambling but there's just varying degrees of the gamble um, they, oh, they call themselves worse than degenerates. They call themselves the arsler regularly, like all the time. Like that's like part of their culture. They call themselves arsler. They call themselves degenerates because they know, again, black pilled memers with a lot of extra money. Um, and the reason that they do that is because, uh, they know that they're just a bunch of idiots gambling on wall street. And as it turns out, now that Robinhood exists, it's actually super, super easy to gamble on Wall Street as long as you have some money. They use autistic as a slur all the time. Yeah, yeah, they call themselves autistic as well. Um, and this has had some weird effects over time. There's been some funny things that have happened in the past with Wall Street bets. But for the most part, uh, Wall Street bets is just gambling it's just a like a, a place of fun and sometimes people will make a little bit of money here and there sometimes people will hit the jackpot or whatever but it's not really been anything super super impactful and then january happened and let me show you what we've jumped to very very recently <laughs> this that i'm about to play for you will set the mood for this entire saga and it's just really good. Just take a listen. This is from, this is a video that was taken from the Discord of Wall Street Bets. Ready? Loudness warning. Loudness warning. All right, here we go. That is the that was the discord as of yesterday afternoon. That was the, the discord. So many users in the voice chat that it was literally crashing discord. Unbelievable. And it's just a bunch of random redditors lee you know Le epic elon musk bacon okay elon musk visited the discord that doesn't surprise me we're gonna get into that so let that be the absolutely wonderful beginning to this incredible incredible story that i am about to tell you okay <laughs> 
Let me just check on one thing real quick. All right. All right. One last quick thing before we really get into it. If you aren't subbed to my channel, why the fuck not? Please hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, because I promise you, I will deliver you incredible content just like this all the time. And hit the like button because you can boost me up in the algorithm and I would love to have you be one of my imps. This show is made completely possible by viewers like you. I don't do uh, sponsorships. I don't do any of that shit. It's just you and it's just us together. All right. And you can come hang out on the website and get cool emotes if you want to be up on the screen. All right. And now let's do the content. The real Robin Hood. True. Closed captioning for Demon Mama is brought to you in part by... Yeah, invest in Demon Mama now. I am the next GameStop, I promise you. It's even more exciting than GameStop. Plus, you actually get something. All right? So, for in order to understand the story of GameStop, you must understand two extremely ridiculous and complicated uh, investing terms okay so i know you're all a bunch of of adderall fueled zoomers but please bear with me so i can explain to you an important concept okay invest in demon mama stock indeed invest now let the stonks go up but the real thing i need to describe to you is a concept called short selling okay now short selling Oh, thank you very much, Somniostatic. Really, really appreciate that. See, there we go. Yeah, yeah, but it's okay. But not everyone is going to be understanding this. So I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah, exactly. I'll mama explain it to you all. Okay. Okay. So, uh, short selling is, uh, there's actually two ways I can do this. I'm going to describe it the, the normal way first, and then I'm going to do, uh, the second one. Short selling is a concept in, stock trading whereby a person the short seller or the short for that matter um another term that's used uh sells shares that they don't yet own okay so you are going to you basically say hey buddy you want to buy my stocks for name price I have them right here. Absolutely. Here's your stocks. I'll deliver them to you very soon. Um, hey, thank you very, very much. The Biden admin is looking at this sitch. Yes. Yeah. really rose up and I can't believe they actually did it. They did it. They did do it. Thank you, Eurus McProl. And thank you very much, Adam Flores. Thank you so much. Buying into Demon Mama before she goes The gamers have risen up. Indeed. Thank you so much. So... Uh, a short sell is when you sell a stock that you don't actually own yet. But here's the deal. The reason why you can short is because there are rules in the stock market that say you have this much time before you have to fulfill a sale. So you have time to deliver uh, the stock. And what you do when you short sell, sell is you say, hmm. I'm going to guess that this stock is going to decline in value in between the time that I sell it to somebody else and when I actually buy the stock to give it to them. And what this means is that if you do a short sell successfully, you can make a lot of money because think about it like this. If you sell something at a certain price and then when you buy it, it's a cheaper price than what you sold it for already. When you fill the stock, you get to pocket the extra profit. You make the money. However, short selling is very, very risky. And you, yeah, you, you assume an incredible amount of risk. Exactly. And the reason why is because if you don't have the stock yet, what happens if the stock doesn't go down? What if the stock goes up? Well, then you sold it for a cheaper price and you have to take out of your pocket to fulfill the order, okay? Now, this might be going over your head, 
But I have an image that was provided to me by a dear friend that I'm going to share with you because I think it's a pretty good uh, a descriptor of this uh, of this whole phenomenon. Okay, ready? I'm gonna I'm gonna explain it in a way that everyone can get now that I've done the technical description. Let's dumb this down for you apes. Let's say five bananas currently cost ten dollar. One ape on market has five banana. Snake asks to borrow five bananas and instead sells the five bananas, thinking thinking the price will go down soon. Shorting it. That's what I just described. He thinks he can buy them later for less and give them back to ape. So he make profit on the difference. Group of apes notice what stupid snake doing and decide to buy all bananas on the market until snakes have no other choice than to buy from the group of apes in order to return what they borrowed. If group of apes stay strong, then price go up. Apes together strong. Ascend to ape, as I have said. Do not return to monkey. Ascend to ape. Ape together strong. So that's the way that it works. Uh, there's a little bit of this going on. We'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later. King Kong wins. Exactly. So uh, I'll save this one for later, Somniostatic. Thank you very much. I'll take a look into it. Okay. So as you can under, as you can now see, the goal is it, it's it's a risk. You're taking a you're gambling on the fact that a stock will do worse. Except there's more to it than that. Okay. Because when you short sell, now an individual person short selling. By the way. Oh, thank you very much, Stuff Pink Owl. I really appreciate that. Um, but uh. It, normally, as just a random independent investor, a sh your short sell isn't going to mean anything. You might lose some money. You might gain some money. Who knows? Nothing matters. However, if massive, massive venture capital firms, which have billions of dollars, short sell on a stock, that could cause some things to happen, right? Think about it this way. What if you're an investor, right? Pretend for a minute that you're an investor. We have to go we have to go into capitalist brain mode for a little bit here, okay? We're going to pretend everybody put on your fake capitalist hats. If you're if you, let's pretend you had a lot of money. If you have a lot of money and you want to make money, you're going to pay attention to what other people in the market are doing, right? Because other you don't want to lose money, you want to make money. So if you see a massive corporation short selling a stock you might go oh shit that stock is probably gonna fail shit because of course that would be a rational conclusion right if a giant corporation with way more information than you starts short selling a stock they're indicating that they believe that a stock that a company is going to go down and they're in a position to make a lot of money so you might short sell too or you might get rid of your stock in order to be safe. And what this can do is this can create a feedback loop that drives a stock down and in fact can crush a company. A company a company stock could be completely ruined if large enough venture capitalists, also known as hedge funds, large, huge money funds that take high risks, all decide to do the ultimate peer pressure. Yes, you got it right there. It's the ultimate peer pressure. Because think, if everybody starts believing that a company is going to fail, well, the company might just fail. Hmm. There's another concept I need you to understand, okay? So this is another one, all right? And this one is even more... This is even more out there. But I, but I need you to be stick with me, Adderall Zoomers. Stick with me, okay? This is called a put option, okay? Boring term. Yes, yes, I, I will be talking about this extensively as we go on, okay? A put option. A put option is similar to a short sell, except it's a little bit more complicated, okay? A put option is when you purchase, imagine you could buy a ticket, okay? And that ticket would guarantee you the right to sell your stocks at a certain price. So you 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 buy the the ticket and it and you don't you don't have any obligation to actually fulfill the order. You just have the right to sell those stocks at a specific price within a certain period of time. They're very limited. Put options are 
generally very limited. They only last, the ticket only lasts for a certain amount of time. And if you don't buy, then the ticket is lost and you lose your money. Okay? Um, and you, you just poof, gone. Be but the, the thing is that usually put options only cost so much. You pay a small premium to get the right to potentially make some money. And so they, in that way, they're less risky than a short sell, but they still cost you money. And when a stock is getting very popular, put options, the cost of a put option will go up, up, up. So it starts to cost more and more money to buy that golden ticket that lasts for a couple of days before it goes poof. And keep in mind that most of the time, you're not going to lose really bad unless you're buying a lot of put options. So imagine that you go to Chuck E. Cheese's and you buy a thousand Chuck E. Cheese coins. But then the Chuck E. Cheese goes out of business the next day. All of a sudden, your Chuck E. Cheese coins are worthless. And now, there might be lots of other kids in town who lost five or six Chuck E. Cheese coins, but you bought a thousand Chuck E. Cheese coins, and now your Chuck E. Cheese coins are worthless. They're trash. Gone. Evaporated. Money poofed. Now you understand... The, ba the very, very like dummy brain basic version of short selling and put option. What do you do with the coins exactly? What do you even do with all the coins? Well, you throw them in the garbage, I guess. Okay? So, now we get into the actual narrative. Now that you know what a short sell is and what a put option is, which are both high risk they're, they're, they're considered to be high-risk strategies, both of them. One, more so, and the other one, less so. <laughs> I'm coming for whoever killed my rat arcade. Well, it's interesting you should say that because that does happen. You know, it, it, there's, this thing happens. When people lose a lot of money or their companies that they put their blood and soul into go bankrupt, people get real angry. And some pretty fucked up shit can happen, as it turns out. Sometimes people get bonked. Sometimes vendettas are formed. And as it turns out, this situation is an absolute lattice of vendettas. That just, oh, unbelievable. All right, so let me tell you what actually happened, now that you understand. In mid-January, a large post, this is like early to mid-January, a large post went up on Wall Street Bets. This post is called a DD or a due diligence. A due diligence is when you are considering uh, a risky purchase, you do a bunch of, re a fuckload of research. A due due diligence. Yeah, it's a due due diligence. Um, but a due diligence is when you do a fuckload of research to try and make sure that you're actually taking a reasonable risk think before you do exactly that's what a dd is now there's many many times there's many many times where your due diligence isn't enough and you're going to end up losing money anyway but due diligence is necessary any serious investor will do a due diligence you need to research the company you need to find out who's who within the company you need to find out what decisions the company is making you need to in you need to investigate who's investing in the company and why now, a due diligence on GameStop appeared on Wall Street Bets in mid-January. And as it turns out, this due diligence was incredibly, incredibly detailed. Yeah, deep fucking value. That's the person who made it. User deep fucking value. This post is unfathomably popular, okay? It gets a million Reddit awards, the equivalent of people just dumping bits on him, just all kinds of gifts, like just, oh my God, you figured it out because he did a lot of work or they did a lot of work, okay? And let me tell you what they actually discovered, okay? 
Yeah, one million chunguses. They got a lot of epic bacons, okay? You got a lot of big chunguses stickers stuck to your post. This is how ridiculous this whole situation is. Here's what they discovered. So they discovered that a hedge fund named Melvin Capital, remember that name, Melvin Capital, a massive hedge fund, was short selling an incredible amount of GameStop stock. So much, in fact, that it appeared to be uh, choking out the stock itself. So basically, this massive investment firm was had a bunch of short sells out on GameStop, expecting it to drop. And of course, they would make a lot of money off of this. A lot of money if it dropped. But there were a couple of issues. There were a couple of really weird issues because, as we know, short selling is very risky. And as it turns out, they had so many short sells out on the stock that there were more short sells than there actually are stocks. Somebody fucked up. Or somebody was hoping that something would happen and they would make a lot of money. And of course, they probably assumed that nobody would ever notice this because they probably wouldn't. You know, you could fulfill those orders over your legal, legally required set of time. You could toss money around and, and whatever. But what if it was possible to raise that stock price with a concerted effort of black-pilled Zoomer, Elon Musk, Epic Bacon Redditors and not only totally fuck a massive hedge fund, but also make yourself a lot of money. Like a lot of money. Uh-oh. Well, as it turns out, the math checks out, or at least so it seems. What was, what was talked about in this due diligence was a projection of the futures, the potential futures of GameStop's stock prices if a bunch of different things happened and a whole bunch of scenarios were laid out a whole bunch of p possible projections there was research done on the ceo on the board of advisors for the company on decisions that gamestop was making and then the math was done along the way this person says well what if you buy in here what if you buy in at fifteen dollars okay here's how much money you could make what if you buy in at sixty dollars you would still make money provided this works what if you buy in at a hundred dollars you could still make money. And it turns out that given the circumstances, if enough people bought the stocks, people could make money even if they were coming late to the party. And this made Wall Street bets very, very, very excited. As you can imagine, imagine you, a doomed, a doom-pilled Zoomer with a whole bunch of money in your pocket and all you want is to be able to have a yacht or the newest Xbox or to pay your student debts or whatever. I mean, imagine, just imagine, what would you do if you could turn right now, if you could turn a couple thousand dollars into ten thousand dollars what if you had five hundred dollars in your bank account and you turned it into two thousand dollars would you take that deal would you take that deal my lovely imps if somebody said give me 500 and i'll give you two thousand right now what if they said give me 500 and i'll give you two thousand and you'll get to fuck over somebody that you hate and you'll get to boost the stock of a company that you probably have some good memories of. You know, a lot of people probably have some memories when they were younger of going to GameStop and getting their favorite game and all that stuff. Now you can see what started to happen on Wall Street bets. The Redditors realized we... F now, there's one small note that I should make, which is that Reddit fucking hates 
or Wall Street bets specifically, fucking hates hedge funds. They fucking, but they specifically hate hedge funds that are sh that are short sellers. They hate, like hate short sellers because and there's there's it's really complicated the reasons for this but they really hate hedge funds that short sell and the reason being is that like i said before mass short selling can often kill companies and enrich the hedge fund they tank struggling companies yes this has happened to lots and lots of companies in the past many 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 companies it's literally what um well see that's the thing they're well we'll see we'll get there um they they hate them and they specifically hate this particular hedge fund so now you have the perfect storm on your hands right q one week ago the second due diligence drops on wall street bets from the same user who has done now significantly more research and is willing to tell people, listen, you need to invest. If you all will invest with me, I promise you, you're gonna be rich. You can buy and does a whole bunch of math to show that you can buy at, like I mentioned before, at all these rates, except now the math is showing that it could be even more. There's even more money to be made. And the due diligence reveals a couple of interesting pieces of information. The first piece of information being that GameStop CEO is really in it for the love of GameStop, kind of. GameStop's current CEO is has a history of being a retail guy. He, at, what, when I say when I say retail, I mean that means he likes to found companies that actually do something. He's not a financial guy. I mean he is, but he's not like his his life passion is in founding companies and making them make money as opposed to like like you know buying and selling all kinds of stocks stocks all the time. This guy actually is invested. I mean I don't know if he cares about video games, but he cares about the company. Um, and he also. Um, he yeah he he's now don't don't get a hero worship thing the guy is like has his own problems but the fact of the matter is he made a lot of money with a previous company called i think it was called chewy chewy is the name of the company um that he made before and he made a lot of money off of that company and yeah don't st don't see yeah don't stand the ceo don't worry i'm not gonna stand him i'm just saying this is important to understand please remember capitals hats on for just a few minutes this guy made chewy and he made a lot of money and a lot of people didn't believe in him that when he first was trying to find money to fund chewy and so he has a lot of people who he approached for money when he founded chewy who now go oh shit i missed an opportunity to invest in this guy Keep that in your back in the in in the the back of your head, okay? So this post, this second due diligence, DD number two on GameStop, reveals that the CEO is very very passionate about making sure that GameStop GameStop succeeds. He doesn't want to parachute out. He wants GameStop to succeed, and he's willing to go there. And he he's been in a conflict with the board uh the board of investors. He's been there's been all of this internal politics. I'm not going to get into the internal politics of GameStop because it's impossible. But he's uh you know he he's invested in the company, and the Wall Street bets people posit that he won't back out and in fact if something like this was to happen he might even double down because he wants his company to succeed so they're doing some psychologizing right now you know they're trying to think well what, what might this guy do and then another thing was posited which is that mathematically somebody like say elon musk or Warren Buffett could single-handedly explode the entire situation because somebody like Elon Musk is so rich that he could buy enough stock, actual stock on the market to completely change the price single-handedly. 
that was floated and the math was showed the due diligence was done and so they said here are the three situations that could happen right elon musk could get involved which is why all of the redditors were pestering elon musk about it warren buffett could get involved or more likely we could start to raise the price and all of those friends of the ceo who missed the opportunity to make money last time will show up and as it turns out two out of those three situations happened elon musk somebody got the information to elon musk and elon musk tweeted about it after this post went live so you can imagine the fever pitch remember the that was happening on reddit because elon musk who could single-handedly make everyone a lot of money including himself tweeted about it so not only is all of this evidence presented but the fever pitch is like oh my god it's gonna happen it's gonna happen holy fuck and everyone starts freaking out and so they decide to buy it happens the the fever explodes and everybody decides to buy thousands of redditors buying the stocks who knows who else is doing it there might even be those those aforementioned friends of the ceo who are now investing in gamestop in the hopes that they can save yeah um but like a hypercharged positive feedback loop a, a positive feedback loop that can only be described as like a a a, a I don't even know it's like it's like a like uh, they're all losing their minds it's like they're all chanting and and it's just it's so much so much energy they're all reinforcing each other just imagine an echo chamber with a speaker the size of a fucking uh, of a fucking skyscraper blasting into the echo chamber and everyone's ears are blowing out and they're all throwing their money at gamestop that brings us to this right here this is where it started so the elon musk tweet somewhere around here and then now we can see that a stock which was once worth only 20 bucks is now worth 347 as of closing tonight but it gets more complicated yes his tweets did tank his own company stock and he did that for the same reason you see because as it turns out elon musk also hates hedge funds because they kind of fucked him over now again this is a bunch of shitty people fucking over other shitty people so you know it's not like elon musk is like a hero or whatever but he has a vendetta about it everyone hates hedge funds yeah of course they do um, hedge funds are just so goddamn much money. Uh, they have so much money. They can completely manipulate the markets. It's ridiculous. So, of course, we start to see the, uh, money going up and up and up. And then it gets even fucking weirder. Okay? Oh, that's really complicated, Adam Flores. Uh... Well, we're going to talk about where we get into the questionable legality, okay? All right, here we go. So, let me show you a little weird thing, okay? Let me show you. Like I told you, I did I told you I did my fucking research on this, okay? Take a look at this, everybody. Now, you might notice actually here, I'm going to have to even zoom it in, okay? Wait, this is the one day. I wish I could get a 3 day. Okay, as you can see, see how there's been a couple of little dips here? See here? See the little dips? See these little dips that have happened? There's been like two big dips. Two really notable dips. How wait, how the fuck does it get weirder? Yeah, yeah, we go. We got some we got some, I see we have some Wall Street betters in here. The dip. Now this is weird, right? Because look at this. Why would the stock dip down like this? after it skyrocketed so high surely it can't just be the reddit users surely it can't just be the reddit users well that's the thing jade monkey it's not just <laughs> yeah windleby it's not 
it doesn't seem that the math checks out on people just selling. It's not just people selling, actually, as it turns out. And a third due diligence appeared. That was on Monday, okay? Now, I need to describe at this point, again, my, my Adder, Adderall-riddled Zoomers, I must describe to you another complicated s concept, okay? Are you ready? This is called a market maker, all right? Let me describe to you what a market maker is. Um... Yeah, a market maker. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, all of this is a giant mess of of, of, of totally nonsensical chaos, coke, cocaine-fueled chaos, all of it. Now, let me explain this. So, a market maker, the most informative show. I try to be, I try to be. DM stock is going up, 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 baby. You know it. Now... A market maker. Let me let me try and explain this to you. So, as you know, the exchanges like the New York Stock Exchange are like a private entity that has a whole bunch of restrictions placed on it from years and years of, of legislation and blah, 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 blah. But there's a whole bunch of internal private functions and rules that the stock market uh, follows and one such thing that they do is that they will designate certain companies as market makers and these market makers are generally and this is a general rule uh massive massive uh firms that have uh that are invested in the stability of the stock market itself okay so it kind of makes sense if you think about it if you're a stock market if you're running the actual stock market you want to have some big companies that basically go yeah we're not going to fuck you over because we it's in our interest that capitalism keeps ticking yeah that the market keeps ticking so it makes sense right it's it's like symbiotic or so you would think Market makers are massive firms that the that the stock market gives extra extra credence to. So they can they get special access to certain things. They can do actions that other people aren't allowed to do on the stock market. And if things are going wonky, generally the stock market will defer to the market makers if things are going crazy, you know? <laughs> maybe maybe god is trans girl um but market makers need it's not just buffett no it's not there's a lot there's a you'd, you'd be surprised there's a lot of firms that are that are considered market makers but nonetheless the goal is that there's sort of a there's sort of a handshake agreement that market makers will remain as neutral as possible because their interest is in the market itself that's why they're called a market maker they're interested in the actual market itself and not necessarily in making a quick buck they're in it for the long term or at least they're supposed to be but what happens what happens if one of your market makers happens to be invested in the company that short sold a fuckload of GameStop stock and is is in a position where they might lose millions and maybe even billions of dollars. Uh oh. Uh uh oh. Uh oh. Oh uh oh shit. Oh fuck. Uh oh oh Jesus Christ, what happened? And now we don't have full evidence to know that this is 100% the case. But there's some evidence to say it might be the case. Maybe. And as it turns out, these market makers took advantage of a specific type of action, which I cannot explain to you. It's incredibly, incredibly complicated. But they used a specific investment tactic, and this is available information, to stabilize at two separate points the stock of Game of GameStop. 
can you name it? Yeah, a naked short ladder attack is what is what the postulated movement is called. I it's too complicated for me to explain. It's beyond even my ability. But it's just, it's it's only market makers can do this type of thing. Um, they're only allowed to do it. Um, and so as a result, we got those dips that I showed you before. The little dips that we saw seem to be the result. Yep, naked short selling can only be done by market makers. What this indicates, though, is that those market makers were invested in the side of the short sellers. And you can imagine how this would be controversial, right? Because those the, the, the market maker is supposed to be as neutral as possible. They're supposed to be interested in the market and not necessarily in making a whole bunch of money off of a single stock or whatever. Hmm. Hmm. But guess what? It didn't work. It didn't work. It really didn't work. And uh, the, 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 the memers over on Reddit have managed to keep the price going up. And now they're going to go bankrupt. They're going to go bankrupt. Melvin Capital is going to go bankrupt. And guess what? It gets even weirder. Because Melvin Capital, just the other day, got bailed out to the tune of $2.5 billion by a market maker. Huh. Huh. That's really weird. That's really weird, isn't it? So now... Well, they might get bailed out again. But what we're seeing now, where we're sitting now, where did that all go? Wait, hang on. You're ADHD and lost? Ask your questions, ghost boy. I'll try to explain it to you. What the fuck is going on? Yeah. What the fuck is going on indeed? You have a capital, a, a, a company known as Melvin Capital that has now lost so much money that they've got, that they're going to go under when their stocks, when they have to pay out. And then magic market people made a dip. Yeah, they made a dip in the stock, but they couldn't overcome it. They couldn't overcome the meteoric rise because they thought that if they got it to dip, that people would sh sell out and it would cause a, a panic. Do you see Do you see the tactic that's going on here? Because, um... So in other words, the emperor just admitted they have no clothes. Yes. Basically, yes, more more alago. Yes, correct. Yeah, so the the goal <laughs> Yeah, the goal was to basically reverse the situation because they assumed, well, Wall Street bets, these are a bunch of frivolous idiots. They'll sell out the moment that the stock dips, but they didn't. They held on to their stock. Wall Street bets and many others have held on to their stock despite the dip. And so it rose again. And then it dipped, and they still held, and they ro and it rose again. And now we're in a we really, really, really weird position because now GameStop is worth more than anybody could have predicted, even in the earliest predictions, even in the even in the earliest predictions of when you could buy in. It is way more valuable like double even the fantasy so what i want you to understand is again i know not everybody is stock minded or anything like that yeah i know we'll get to that in just a second um gamestop uh god how do i even describe explain this so Imagine if you have you ever like daydreamed a, like a ridiculous scenario like have you ever daydreamed that like uh, somebody gives you a, uh, a a lottery ticket for your birthday and you scratch it off and you actually win a million dollars. Have you ever daydreamed something like that? Anybody I'm sure you all have I'm sure you all have everybody does right. What if you daydreamed that and then the next morning was Christmas 
and your grandma gave you a scratch ticket and instead of winning a million dollars you won like 30 million that's what we're talking about here even in the absurd scenario of the stock going to 150,000 which they never expected that that would be the case the redditors never thought it was going to get there they just said well we could all make a whole bunch of money if it gets there and now they've realized oh my god it's actually going twice as high as we thought it was and what we are sitting at right now is a position in which gamestop is worth more than fortune 500 companies like a lot of them a uh, gamestop a stock that was failing just two weeks ago is now worth more than uh, you know all on Thank paper i mean it's a hard to explain yeah, look look right here look look at the value of gamestop look at it it's at 347. Let's look at the, some of the stocks on the S&P 500. Hold on. Let me see if we can find. Hold on. Let's look at some of the ones. Let me see if I can find this actual thing. Let me see what the lowest S&P 500 stock is. Let's see. What's the lowest one? The cheapest stock. Let's take a look here. Let's see if I can find it. What is the smallest one? Mattel. Let's see what, what okay, it looks like Mattel is the smallest. Let's see what Mattel's stock is at. 18 bucks, okay? So 18 bucks. This is the worst stock on the Fortune 500 list is Mattel. 18? 300. And 70, or what was it? Let me see. I, I, I can't even remember now because it's changed so much. GameStop, 347. 18, 347. 18, 347. Hmm. Wow. That's pretty impressive that overnight a, a company that is struggling with fuckloads of debt is now worth so goddamn much that it's unbelievable. And what this means though, is that these hedge funds are totally and utterly fucked. Like absolutely and utterly fucked. These hedge funds have, it, it's like, I, I think I saw some people described it like eating a grenade. It's like you literally just, their, their money disappeared. They owe money. Hey, you're very welcome, Boy Meets Mini. This is what I do it. Yeah, GameStop stocks were, but okay, but it's complicated. I can explain that in a second. Imagine Elon Musk stands making a failing company be worth more than FF500 companies by where at market magic doohickey. Yep, by meme magic. Thank you very much, Adam Flores. Um, is this the super capitalism theory coming to fruition? No, but we'll talk about that a little bit more once we get through the... Oh, did I miss a dono, Ghost Boy? Did I miss a dono? Ghost Boy, sorry about that. Thank you for explaining the anti-logic of our capitalist hellscape. I don't know how I missed that one. I'm really sorry, Ghost Boy. Thank you so very much for the tier three sub. And your name looks wonderful, if I don't say so myself. Thank you very much, Ghost Boy. Thank you for reminding me. I don't know. Sounds like it isn't falling anymore. Well, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's hard to tell where it goes from here. And that's why we're in the middle of a, of a developing story. We're in the middle of a developing story because who knows what's going to happen now. Well, now we know that the Discord is gone. The Wall Street Bets Discord is gone. Um, and the Reddit might be gone soon. We don't know if the feds are going to get involved. We don't know who else is going to get involved, but a lot of people are very, very, very fucking angry. Because imagine, imagine you're used to being able to get away with basically whatever you want all the time and just make tons and tons of money. And all of a sudden, you wake up the next morning and you're fucked. 
and you're in debt and there's a whole bunch of people that you owe money for to or not that you owe money to but you owe stocks to which you have to purchase and you have to purchase them you sold them for 20 bucks and you have to buy them for 350 uh-oh touch on that and you so uh this is where it gets this is where we get into the like capitalism discussion <laughs> okay <laughs> because this shit happens all the time but in the other direction hedge funds fuck over and cannibalize and and destroy companies all the motherfuck all the motherfucking time they do it all the time and they never get in trouble for it because they're the ones who get to make the rules you see because at the end of the day most of the time in capitalism what matters is whether you have money or not whether you can invest and if you have the money well the market the literal market itself will bow down to you except for when you fuck up really bad except for when you fuck up really, really bad. And now we don't know what's gonna happen because what, are they gonna bail them out? Are they gonna bail them out? Who knows? Probably, realistically, probably. But let me just read you um, a couple of, of interesting comments that I found on Wall Street Bets before today happened, okay? What's the incentive anymore to have an IPO if you care about your large company? I don't know. You tell me. Nobody knows anymore. We're in chaos zone. I don't fucking know. You think I know? What? Which company makes silly <laughs> Skittles? I need to buy their stall. True, Morg Porg. Actually, there are a couple who do. I don't know if they're. I don't know if they're publicly traded though. Um. Let me just read you a few of the choice comments that I found, okay? So the first one was from uh, the person who did the due dil diligence themselves, uh, Deep Fucking Value, I think their name is. Uh, and they stated this, which is, um, we are now playing the game against the folks who write the rules of the game. And that is true. They are indeed. They are now gambling their way into a rather scary situation because there's billions of dollars on the line and when there's billions of dollars on the line people can do some pretty weird things people can do some pretty extreme actions the vehemoth interview if you have that maybe we could watch it yeah Kakaguri marketing campaign? Maybe. I mean, and again, though, this is all gambling, just so you know. That's all of this. I mean, it is a form of wealth distribution. It's just a very um, weird one. It's a very, very weird one. Um, but we'll talk about that in just a second, okay? Because I want to read off these ones, okay? Real quick. No, it's not in Russian. I know a lot of people think it's in Russian, but it's actually, uh, it just says unionize Amazon tax Bezos. Let me read you this. Ready? By the way, unionize Amazon and tax Bezos. Um, here we go. This is from a uh, user, my fun little alt. This situation reminds me so much of the housing crash, normal people trying to use market conditions to their advantage and the banks just manipulating the situation to max profit. When it all came crashing down, the normal people were blamed. The, bl the banks got protected and real people's got people got their lives ruined moral of the story when this starts to really hurt the hedge funds rules uh that the funds the rules will be changed the funds will get bailed out and regular people will be ruined if you think it'll be different you're kidding yourself the exact same people are in charge now as were in charge then make money while you can because they will not be allowing this very very soon that's kind of true though um all right, well, uh, give me a bit, Dan Starlight. I'm in the middle of something right now. Yeah, he's... I, I, I mean, yeah. 
Okay, we'll watch this afterwards. Okay? Oh, we'll watch that afterwards. Um, and here's another quote. This is from user C4Diesel from the same from the same uh, page, but different thread. I think there's much more underlying eat the rich sentiment now than there was in 06 and 07. If they bailed out firms at the expense of regular people today, rich people may literally begin to be eaten. It would be a dangerous move. Not that I would put it past the U.S. Oof. I mean, true. The U.S. does do this. I mean, our corpor our our country loves corporations. Our com our country is really close to an oligarchy. But can you imagine what would happen if while Biden is telling you you got to wait till April to get fourteen hundred dollars so that you don't die from coronavirus? He also bailed out a bunch of deeply irresponsible hedge funds and make no mistakes these hedge funds were gambling with people's money and lives like 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 completely like in the order of billions of dollars like you think that's gonna go over well I guess we're gonna find out right we're going to find out what actually happens. This is how the American government functions. I'm ready for Occupy 2.0. I mean, yeah. Yeah. So that's the situation as it stands right now. It's funny how the nation has financial laws in the stock market, and they, the nation, barely even does anything obviously moral and social and social implications to invoke those laws. It's like pretending to be ticklish, and when you get tickled, you barely flinch. Yeah. I mean, they the, the laws are all like, they, they have to be enforced. If they're not actually enforced, then it doesn't mean anything. And this is the thing. I mean, it could be, but I don't know if that's the case. That's why right now we're going to enter in to the, the discussion portion. You now know the story. As, as far as it goes, it might get crazier over the next few days. We'll find out. Um, it might get really crazy over the next couple of days. It might not. There's so many unknowns right now. All we do know is that a lot of Redditors made a lot of money. Yeah, do your research, but seriously, actually do your research if you're going to get involved.